Today marks 10 days with the iPhone 15 Pro Max and let me tell you, if you're interested in buying this phone, you need to know this. I literally went viral this week talking about this phone and I still have so much to tell you which you may not know. My experience with the iPhone 15 Pro Max can be summed up with two words, beautiful heartbreak. This phone is a perfect example that Apple is not invincible. There are issues that Apple could improve but they might not be able to fix them completely ever. I'm gonna start with perhaps the biggest concern people have regarding the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max which is durability. For the sake of testing, I've been using my iPhone 15 Pro Max completely naked, caseless, screen protectorless, just to see how well it can handle my not so careful usage. And well, I am happy to report that on my black iPhone 15 Pro Max there is no scratch, no dent, no discoloration, nothing. The only complaint I have is that fingerprints show up very quickly on the sides, especially on this black model, so it can get a bit annoying. With the risk of using this phone naked, I got the reward. This feels so 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 good in hand without a case. Pro Max phone this light? It's actually unreal how lightweight this feels. And that's where my heart breaks because as we have seen in number of drop tests on YouTube, this back glass is not very trusty. They made the back glass easy to repair but in the process they somehow made this the weakest iPhone ever. So I'm gonna be using a case and I'm gonna recommend anyone who's getting 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max to invest in a case or at least buy Apple Care when it comes to long-term usage. Now, when it comes to the front of the iPhone 15 Pro, nothing has changed. It's still a great panel from last year, but do you know you can actually turn this display into a 120 inch immersive screen? Yes, the future is here. The Witcher XR glasses for the iPhone 15 series are finally here to take everything to a whole new level. They connect directly to the new iPhone 15 series via USB-C port, which transfers the iPhone display into a 120-inch 1080p immersive screen. You can play your favorite games or watch your favorite shows on Netflix or do productivity in the most amazing way possible. The free Spacewalker app lets you easily turn your iPhone into a remote control laser beam so you can navigate around and enjoy exclusive features like multi-screen workstation and 360 VR video. If you wear prescription glasses like me, you're gonna love these. They come with built-in adjustable myopia diopter. They come with a color changing film which means by pressing the button on the side you can change the background darkness without affecting the brightness of the screen. I highly recommend Virtue XR glasses, check out my link in the description for an exclusive 10% discount, make sure to use my special code ZTECHCARE. Moving on to cameras, you know when they say when Apple does something they do it better? Sometimes that is actually true in the case of iPhone 15 Pro Max this year. Using this camera made me realize that how other brands, especially Samsung, they have been underutilizing their camera for years ever since they introduced higher megapixel count on their Galaxy S20 Ultra four years ago. The most clutch thing about the iPhone 15 Pro Max compared to any other phone on the market is that it takes 24 megapixel photos by default without compromising the HDR performance or colors of the image and without you doing anything. This is the biggest biggest thing that I love about this camera that blew me away. My most used camera will always be the main camera sensor and every image just comes out so crispy. Samsung couldn't implement this thing for all these years. Sure, you can manually switch to 50 or 200 megapixel mode, but it does take a hit to HDR, which is why it's not the default mode. Another area which makes such a big difference is the shutter speed. Especially when you're shooting in high resolution mode, the waiting times can get ridiculously long. Apple's implementation can be summed up in a way that you can give the iPhone 15 Pro Max to any person out there who doesn't know how to use tech properly and even that person can take high-res crispy photos without any compromise of quality without doing anything in the settings. Next up is video and this is one area where Apple has just been better than everyone out there and now they've made the experience even better by implementing a simple thing that I'm pretty sure all the other brands can do but they're not doing. Not a lot of people have mentioned this but the iPhone 15 Pro Max lets you 
switch all lenses while you're shooting 4K 60 FPS mode with zero lag. The video looks absolutely amazing and it's still the best footage out of any phone. The lens switching in 4K 60 FPS mode has to be the smoothest I've ever seen on any smartphone. Now taking a look at that 5x zoom, it is fun to shoot with but honestly, I kind of prefer the 3x lens which I was so used to before. The 5x lens always make me step back a bit in most scenarios which I'm still getting used to but I still would have loved to have a separate 3x lens, something we get on the Galaxy S23 Ultra instead of just relying on a 5x zoom. In terms of the image result, it's great but nothing really groundbreaking and when you go beyond 5x level, the quality starts to drop. It is better than the previous generation of the iPhone but it's definitely not on the same optical level of the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So when it comes to zoom, understand this, that Samsung is still very much the king. Now something worth mentioning about this 5x zoom is that it does work with the action mode so you can get really good and I mean really good stabilized, super stabilized, super zoomed shots. Other than this, I like the fact that you can actually edit the cinematic videos after you take them and you can do the same thing with the portrait mode photos. So overall, camera wise, this might be the best camera on any phone right now, especially if you're someone who's gonna use the main 1x lens most of the time, the crispy images combined with the crispy 4K 60fps video, it is a beast of a setup. Now I am one of the lucky ones as in I haven't noticed any abnormal overheating on my iPhone 15 Pro Max like some people have reported when they were using simple apps like social media. Luckily I haven't faced those issues, it does get warm during gaming or when I'm doing some intensive tasks but nothing out of ordinary. With that being said, the A17 Pro is a throttle king. Whether you are facing abnormal heating or not, if you are going to game on this phone, especially the high-end games that are not yet utilizing the metal effects or the GPU upscaling technology, the high performance that it's going to deliver in the first few minutes is going to drop very quick. And that's where the heartbreak number 2 kicks in because the 3 nanometer promise was a lie. And this is where Apple is not invincible meaning they might not be able to fix this issue. With the help of a software update, they're going to downclock the speed of the A17 Pro, which means there will be a drop of performance for the sake of a better thermal management, which pretty much takes the Pro away from the A17 chip. Am I still excited about those console games that are coming on my 15 Pro or Pro Max? Not as much as I was when it was first announced, but I'm still hoping that the specific optimization from developers could shock everyone. But at this point, it is hard to tell. Now, when it comes to battery life, this is another area where I expected big changes, especially considering the three nanometer process, but it actually lost to my Galaxy S23 Ultra by a decent margin. Don't get me wrong, battery life is still great, it's not bad, but I personally expected more from the world's first phone with a 3 nanometer chip. Apple was right indeed when they listed no battery improvements on the iPhone 15 Pro Max compared to the 14 Pro Max. Now my favorite comfort feature on the iPhone 15 Pro Max has to be USB-C because despite not having proper fast charging, it's kind of amazing to see that we finally have USB-C on an iPhone. I mean, it's not something groundbreaking of course if you're using an Android phone, but the fact that I can connect all my accessories and all my other fast chargers with this phone, it has been such a great ease of use. Now perhaps the most surprising and un-Apple feature on this phone is the action button. From the built-in functions to opening random apps to specific shortcuts that just opens a whole world. I mean this is a feature that Android had for a while but Apple clearly took this to a whole new level. With that being said, I have personally left it as a ringer which is the default action. I don't know I like it that way for now but maybe I'll change it to something else later. Now rest of the stuff is amazing on this phone as it was on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, for example the display. There's nothing really new, I mean it has slightly less bezels so it does look pretty but we do have dynamic forehead up there so it doesn't bother me as much as it did when I first saw it on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It may not be as clean as the S23 Ultra but Face ID is reliable and it works great. Other things like haptics, speakers, call experience, mic performance, all that stuff is just top tier. So to sum it all up, some promises were under delivered but in other areas Apple completely surprised me. I'm genuinely very impressed with the camera experience on the phone but I'm hot 
not broken that I have to use a case on this thing. The throttling situation for the A17 Pro has been disappointing. If you're thinking of upgrading from the iPhone 14 Pro series, please don't do that. But if anyone who's using the 13 Pro or 12 Pro, there is a lot to look forward to that genuinely makes this a good upgrade for those people. As for myself, I'm really impressed by that camera performance, uh, but at the same time, I had big hopes for the A17 Pro. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I will be doing another long-term review after a month, so stay tuned for that. With that being said, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.